Welcome back guys. You're watching today's Platinum and in this video we're going to be going over the daily cryptocurrency news and updates across the market um, including Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as well. So if you guys enjoy daily news videos on the cryptocurrency markets definitely subscribe if you guys are interested in that type of content and leave a like if you guys do enjoy this video. So getting into the topic guys uh, the, the daily you know update for today I mean across the whole market is you know, we're kind of again in a limbo area. Um, we haven't seen a ton of price fluctuation for the last few weeks or so now, um, and we're really starting to hope to see a uh, break above the key levels that we're at right now. So over over you know the whole market, we're kind of some green, some red, more red than green though. Um, but hopefully we can start to see a push up towards um, the current resistance that biz, uh, Bitcoin is facing. So here's the long-term chart uh, that we've been looking at. The 50-day moving average is actually below, I think that's the red one, right? Yep, 50-day moving average is below the blue, so still having a bear signal from that. Um, however, we did hit that oversold signal on the RSI uh, just a, a week or two ago. Um, so we have been moving up from that, but not moving up as quickly as I, uh, you know, I expected. But however, when you compare to the last time that we were oversold on the one day chart, it took about 14 days um, for that to, you know, come to fruition. And so far it's been about nine days. So um, I would expect, you know, really within um, up until about the 28th of June, I would expect something, some type of large movement to happen, whether it's to the upside to the downside. Um, but hopefully we get some more pl price fluctuations um, to pick up some cheaper coins and then move into more of a bull run. Um, but focusing on the short term, if you guys are looking to get up uh, in a quick trade, Bitcoin is looking to have a support right around 6572 if you want to pick up some coins there. Um, and then hopefully, you know, trade them for a gain up towards 67, 6800. We have seen some pretty hard resistance right around 6800. So um, it'll be interesting to see if we can push past that. If not, I'm sure we'll just break back down and you can pick up some cheaper coins. But uh, jumping into some stories for today, um, we actually have a couple that I want to take a look at. So what's happening in the market An optimistic and pessimistic view? So moving down through this, cryptocurrencies have had their inception and subsequent leap into mainstream awareness, gathered opinions from opposing end of the spectrum, uh, from those hailing the nascent uh, industry as a game changer for the world as we know it, to those uh, equating it to the infamous tulip bubble, everybody has an opinion. Brian Armstrong, CEO and co-founder of Coinbase US based cryptocurrency exchange, thinks people are needlessly worried about the current dip. It can be scary the first time you see it, but to us who have been in the industry for many years, years it feels like old news he said in a motivational message to his team when there's hype people are uh, irrationally exuberant when there's despair people are irrationally pessimistic neither is true he continues adding that the truth is in the middle and that value correlates to transactions per day and not price I 100% agree with everything that was just said. Uh, many people freak out uh, when prices are dropping and people are way too excited when prices are going up. Um, everybody thinks rationally in those times. Uh, you really, to become a successful investor and a trader, have to focus on training your mind to not think that way and to really have more of a rational opinion. So as you can see, just a comparison from all of the um, quote unquote bubbles that we've seen these uh, really quick um, pump up in price and I actually did a detailed video on this uh, a few days ago so if you guys want to check that out it is the um, my price prediction for the next two years of Bitcoin's price movement um, and what we expect to see but this is just a little uh, comparison basically to what has happened in the past um, you know it's a large bull run up and then uh, retracement back and then uh, over time basically sizzles out moves horizontal and then uh, until the next large catalyst that um, boosts up this market yet again so I want to encourage you all to ignore the price of crypto and the headlines which will inevitably start to come up our job is to rise above that finding our own intrins intrinsic source of motivation to come in and do our best work regardless of what other people think so um, I definitely agree with all that was said. Not going to read the rest if you guys want to check that out. Definitely do. But I think we are at a comfortable part uh, point in the market. Um, you know, even if we uh, do, I mean, we've already come down to really this point. So I think the bulk of the retracement is done for the most part, to be honest. Um, I think the bulk is really done. So with that said, I expect to, you know, 
actually I'll, I'll leave that out you guys can go check out the video that I did uh, for Bitcoin's price price movement for the next two years because I, I did a really detailed analysis on that so jumping into the other story I wanted to go in this will probably be the headline of the video tether finally um, you know came out with some type of audit you know uh, we can now have confidence in tether and guys I I didn't I never thought tether was just completely um, a scam or something like that because it ca came from a large exchange Bitfinex um, maybe there was manipulation with it but I don't think that they just didn't have the money and with this article today we discovered that they do have the money so nearly six months after parting ways with its auditor tether has finally produced a third-party report proclaiming that its cryptocurrency is fully backed by US dollars with some big caveats um, caveats the state of tether's reserves has been the subject of controversy for months with online critics claiming the company has been issuing more tokens than it had dollars in the bank, printing money essentially. Uh, Tether has consistently denied this, but has not produced conclusive evidence that it is reserved one for one. The matter has broad implications for the crypto markets, uh, well beyond the holders of the so-called stablecoin known as USDT, whose market cap stood at $2.6 billion on Wednesday. For starters, many have alleged that Bitfinex, the cryptocurrency exchange that shares common owners and managers with Tether, uh, uses USDT to artificially drive up the price of Bitcoin. An academic paper released last week supported this view, and the Commodity Futures Trading Commission reportedly subpoenaed Bitfinex and Tether in December. Also, USDT, while despite the lingering doubts, uh, generally trades around $1, has functioned as a substitute for US dollars. Traders use it to quickly move money between crypto exchanges rather than using bank wire transfers, which can be slow and hard to come by. Given USDT's importance to the ecosystem, then an, in an independent confirmation that the coin is in fact fully collateralized, um, collateralized, something like that long words, um, might be welcome news, undermining the manipulation claims and bolstering market confidence, but the three-page memorandum released Wednesday is probably not going to settle the debate, given its ample disclaimers and a limited scope. First off, the report is not an audit. It was prepared uh, by law firm Free Spork Sporkin and Sullivan LLP, not an accounting firm. That's not for the lack of trying, according to Stu Hogner, Tether's general counsel. The bottom line is that an audit cannot be obtained, uh, Hogner told Coindesk, claiming that this problem is not unique to his company, but one faced by the entire cryptocurrency industry. The barriers is, uh, to getting audited are simply too big to overcome right now, and not just for us. Um, those barriers include a steep learning curve for auditors in an emerging industry, accounting standards that uh, predated the advent of cryptocurrency, creating uh, uncertainty about how the rules apply, and the resulting need for auditors to exercise judgment, which is uh, anathema uh, to a lot of large accounting firms. As a CPA, I understand that. So uh, basically what they're saying, guys, is they did get some sort of an audit, which we'll talk about um, in a second, but... Uh, it's it's pretty tough to get an actual uh, CPA that knows how to audit a cryptocurrency exchange or um, coin or whatever. So although FSS used different uh, procedures than an auditor would, uh, Hogner said he argued that the key conclusions are similar to what an audit would generate, a snapshot of bank balances at a key point in time. But that highlights another issue with the FSS report. It only covers one such point in time, June 1st. On that date, the law firm said it is confident Tether had more money in the bank than tokens in circulation, specifically 2.55 billion of US dollar reserves held at two, two separate institutions to cover 2.54 billion USDT, but the report says nothing about the level of collateralization on any date before or since. In other words, it does, doesn't support uh, purport to show that USDT has been consistently secured over time or that it is fully back today. So um, this article just goes and talks a little bit more about the law firm, but um, pretty legit law firm. So overall, I do believe that, you know, I can trust my money to be in Tether. I actually, you know, trade with Tether and always had a certain level of confidence, at least to be able to trade with it on exchanges. I've never really thought it was just a complete hoax and they didn't actually have the money to back it up. So uh, we have some sort of confirmation today that we do have money in the bank backing Tether. Um, I think that's really good news for the markets, especially with all the bad news surrounding Tether for the past six months or so. Um, so I think that gives a lot of light to the market and hopefully we'll um, end up boosting this market up a little bit, uh, ending up into 
some sort of a bull run. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I um, just wanted to definitely touch on Tether because I think that's a lot of good news for the market. But if you guys enjoy videos like this, again, make sure to subscribe and also hit that notification bell if you want to be updated when we do release videos right when we release them. Uh, with that out of the way, uh, make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one.